Uh, I'm in Ansys Fluent now and uh, I would like to demonstrate and show how to model convection and radiation in Ansys Fluent. So this is basically uh, an Ansys Fluent tutorial and uh, I'm just repeating it for the sake of learning and doing it together with you. Uh, so if I go to the problem description, so the geometry is a very simple cube uh, with the length of uh, 0.25 on each side and the problem is that you have uh, one side heated wall and the rest is just uh, uh, subjected to convection and radiation so this wall is heated wall and it's at constant temperature of uh, 473.15 kelvin all the time and the T ambient is 29 uh, 2090.15 kelvin so except this wall which is uh, uh, which is uh, of the aluminium material the rest is insulation and they are all uh, subjected to uh, radiation and convection so I'll, I'll come back to my problem to my uh, ANSYS fluent here so I start with the model or perhaps I start with the general so the type of solver is pressure based and uh, the gravity is of course on because you have natural convection here in this problem and uh, the direction of uh, gravity is on y direction so if you look at the direction here this is um, minus 9.81 in y direction so the energy in the model is of course set to on because uh, we are going to solve energy equation here uh, this is a laminar case a natural convection case with a laminar situation laminar uh, is set for the viscous model and regarding the radiation uh, there are several options for the radiation models but in this tutorial we are going to use uh, this surface to surface method which is uh, which is a model can, that can be used to account for radiation exchange uh, in an enclosure of gray surfaces between the surfaces inside an enclosure and uh, energy exchange between the surfaces two surfaces of course depends on uh, the size uh, the size the distance between the surfaces and the orientation and all these things can be called like something like view factors uh, so we are going to use the surface to surface method here and i'll keep the iteration parameters as default so i just press ok oh, regarding the view factors and clustering uh, so if I click on the setting what does view factor and clustering mean actually is uh, uh, like in simple cases uh, that you don't have many faces probably one face uh, one face uh, per surface cluster is fine enough and it doesn't take much uh, computational resource but uh, imagine that you have lots of faces in a, in a complex uh, geometry and uh, you want to calculate the view factors between all these faces so when you calculate the view factors between all these faces then um, it, it's taking much time and uh, much computational resource to calculate the surface factors and uh, communicate between the faces and calculate the energy um, q in and q out between each and single faces so the idea of clustering is to uh, cluster some surfaces like if you have like uh, if you put this number to 2 for example you put two faces in each cluster and you reduce the number of faces in your simulations and uh, you reduce the computational time that needs to be iterated between the surfaces so this is a useful thing in the complex geometries but uh, in this very simple uh, case we don't uh, we don't touch it and we keep it as one face per surface cluster and uh, I press OK so in order to have this uh, view factors uh, available in your simulation you need to compute it and write it somewhere in your in your uh, in your uh, fluent files so just press and compute and uh, press on OK uh, and make sure that you save it in the Win uh, WinZip format or in the GZ format because this is a quite uh, big file so you need to compress it before you save it I have done it before so I just press cancel and I press OK here and then regarding the material 
the material is air I press on material um, the only thing I'm changing in the air which is different from the default value is uh, I'm putting the density as ideal gas instead of a constant value so I'm putting it as an ideal gas because uh, the density of course is important in this problem and this is a natural convection and uh, all the flow depends on the difference between the density in the in the warm and cold area so I'm putting the density to ideal gas and uh, as I said we have two um, solid material here um, all the faces are insulation type except this one that we said uh, it's aluminium so we have the same aluminium here with a density of 2719 kilogram per cube meter and the CP and thermal conductivity but you need to create another one uh, which is uh, you call it insulation yourself and you put the density of 50 and the CP of 800 and thermal conductivity of 0 0.09 which is uh, uh, quite low and that's why it's insulation make sure that the material type here is uh, set to solid I press OK and regarding the cell zone condition this is of course uh, fluid type air and then I come to the boundary conditions so the boundary conditions uh, for the wall which is called W high X and with high X we mean this one which is uh, higher in the X coordinate so if I double click on that so this is of course of the type wall so the momentum we don't change it but in the thermal <coughs> Uh, since it's subjected to both radiation and ca convection we put uh, these thermal conditions to mix which means it has both uh, convection and radiation and the heat transfer coefficient uh, H is 5 and the free stream temperature as I said is 20, uh, 2093.15 and external emissivity and internal emissivity uh, this is something that uh, I've seen people are a little bit confused what does it mean so external emissivity is uh, is the emissivity of the surrounding area actually and not not the not the face itself it means uh, it means that the radiation from the the, the surface or the surrounding uh, outside the box in the uh, <clears throat> outside the box something that is radiating to this uh, surface itself has the emissivity of uh, 0.75 and internal emissivity means the emissivity of uh, uh, this specific surface here and uh, it's the emissivity that is uh, radiating to other walls and surrounding uh, as well so we have uh, Q into the surface from the surrounding and we have Q out from the surface as well so this internal and external emissivity are being used uh, for Q in and Q out itself and uh, the radiation temperature the surrounding it's the same as the surrounding temperature free stream temperature and I'm putting it to 2090.15 the wall thickness uh, is set to 0.05 meter uh, this boundary condition is the same boundary condition for the walls on the Z direction so uh, what I'm doing is just simply I'm clicking on W high X and I'm copying uh, copying it to both high uh, W high Z and uh, W low Z and I'm just copying it so I've done it before so if I click on W high Z for example you see that the thermal condition is the same uh, regarding the wall, uh, the y, uh, y coordinates, the walls on the uh, on the y direction. For example, W high Y. Uh, actually, everything is the same uh, except that the heat transfer coefficient is three. So for some reason, because uh, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps the 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 direction of the outside flow is. Uh, is probably in this direction in X direction not in Y direction uh, the heat transfer coefficient on Y direction is a little bit smaller than 
that have in x or z direction. So this is set to 3, but the rest is the same. And the only different wall that we talked about is uh, w low x. Uh, make sure when you come to the thermal, change the material name from insulation to aluminium, because this material is aluminium. And as I said, it is at constant temperature of 473.15 with the internal emissivity of the same material as before, 0.95. And uh, I press OK. <clears throat> so I've done, I'm done with the boundary condition. And uh, regarding, uh, regarding the operating conditions, uh, so, of course, the gravity is on and the direction is on y with the magnitude of point, uh, with the magnitude, uh, the value of 9.81. And uh, we have specified the operating density to zero. Well, there are a lot of questions why we have to put this zero here. Uh, so, this is, a, this is a difficult question to answer and, and uh, you need to go to uh, this Bucinix, uh, Bucinix approximation or Bucinix model and see if you don't use this Bucinix parameters uh, because if you remember in the model we didn't use Bucinix and we just used ideal gas uh, what parameters you have to specify for the for this ideal for this uh, operating density so the methods I have put it to couple for the pressure velocity coupling and uh, body force weighted for pressure and I have turned on the pseudo transient uh, the monitor the residuals I have put it to a lower value for the uh, for the continuity and velocities and uh, for the energy I have put it to 1e e, 1 to 1e e, uh, minus 7 uh, report definitions I have made uh, actually a surface uh, integral of actually I have made a surface report and a very area weighted average of uh, the temperature on one of the walls here and for example uh, M W uh, high X for example so if you look at the report definition here I have made the area weighted average on this uh, Z center. And what is this Z center? Uh, actually, uh, in the post processing, I have uh, I have created a line and rec, uh, which is uh, at the middle, at the middle, at the very middle of uh, <coughs> this cube. So I have put uh, I have. Uh, so let's look at the for example. If I go to display. If I go to display, I have made two two things. I have made one Z center, which is the surface uh, in the X Y plane, and at the very middle of the Z. And I have also made this X Z uh, Z Z Z X side, which is just a line, uh, which is just a line, actually in the X direction. actually in the Z direction and in the middle and in the very middle of the cube <coughs> so uh, uh, <coughs> I think I'm done with the monitoring as well so what I'm uh, what I'm monitoring is uh, is the area weighted average of the temperature on that surface in the middle of the cube uh, initialization I'm just using the hybrid initialization with no patching and then I'm just running the calculation uh, the time step method I'm using the user specified I'm putting the pseudo time step to one and I'm running it for like 400 uh, number of iterations so if I just run it for what like two iterations uh, to take a look at the residuals and uh, you see that the residuals uh, at some 350 iterations are reached to reach to 
to the residuals monitoring here that we have specified. So let's take a look at, for example, some contour plots. I would like to take a look at the temperature in the <coughs> in the Z center. And what I would like to see, so let's uh, uncheck the auto range and put it like uh, 420. Uh, you see this is stratification in the temperature and uh, this is of course something that you see in the buoyant flow and uh, where, the, where the convection, where the natural convection is important as well. So the stratified temperature is quite obvious with the constant temperature and the side wall here as well. And uh, what else we can take a look? We can, we can take a look at the vector of the velocity, this natural convection pro phenomenon here, for example. And uh, vector of velocity on the same Z center. And let's make this scale a little bit bigger. So you see how the natural convection is uh, working here uh, from the bottom to the top and then rotating all the way here. And there is also a recirculation area here as well. Uh, what else we can take a look, for example? <clears throat> yeah, that's it. It's almost uh, what we wanted to show in this tutorial and we wanted to demonstrate. Uh, I have done this same simulation uh, with actually the operating conditions of the density equal to 1.225 which is the uh, the density of the air the results uh, is very identical is very the same uh, except that uh, the pressure is a little bit different okay this was the tutorial I'll come back with the more complex geometry perhaps in the next tutorials thank you very